My girlfriend kicked a child and I can't view her the same way. I'm 26 male and she's 22 female. My girlfriend and I have been dating for two years now. A few days ago, she told me the following. She left to take our dog to the dog park in our apartment complex. When she got there, a boy, who we now know is eight years old, with a ball pump approached her and asked if he could pet the dog. She let him, then when he took too long, told him that the dog can't poop if she's distracted. The kid didn't respond well to that and followed them into the dog park. He climbed into a tube tunnel in there, and when our dog went over to sniff the tunnel, my girlfriend saw him poking our dog with the pump. She told him not to do that and leashed our dog and took her to the trail that goes through the trees behind our apartment complex that's decently far from the dog park. While she was on the trail letting the dog sniff around, she noticed that the boy was following them, still with the ball pump. She pretended to get on her phone and asked the boy something like, what's your name? The police officer on the phone wants to know. The boy got angry and started running at them. My girlfriend put herself between him and our dog and he stabbed the basketball pump in her leg and she kicked him, sending him tumbling down the hill by the path. She said that it was automatic, but I don't know if I believe that. The boy ended up spraining his wrist and his parents called the police. My girlfriend was questioned, but not arrested. The parents want to press charges and as much as my girlfriend insists that she thinks it'll be fine, I just can't get the idea of her being violent towards a minor out of my mind. I want kids someday and I thought I knew who I was dating. She injured a child and I feel so gross that I've been dating someone like this. How does our relationship move forward? Would I be in the wrong if I divorced my husband after the death of our child? My husband, Liam, 39 male, and I, 36 female, have been married for 11 years, together for 15. A couple years ago, our little bundle of joy, our six-year-old daughter, was snatched away from us in a car accident. I was back home when I received the call from the hospital. Liam was in the ICU for a month while I received the terrible news of the death of our daughter who died on spot. He went in shock when he heard the news. Ever since then, Liam has completely withdrawn from me. He took off all the pictures which contain our daughter, turned her room into his study, and pretended as if our daughter never existed. I knew he was grieving. Many times I heard him silently weeping in our daughter's room. I tried to get him into therapy, or for us both to go to counseling, but he had shut down my offer every single time, and goes into rage whenever I mention it. He yells, he breaks things, and storms off, and doesn't come back home for a couple days, leaving me worried sick. He barely comes home nowadays, completely avoids me, and rejects my every attempt for comfort. Once, when I try to make him understand that this isn't what our daughter would have wanted, he completely lost it, smashed a flower pot against the wall, and told me to go F myself, or better, die and never come back. Liam was never like this. He was very sweet, calm, and a patient man, and loved our daughter to death, so much so that her first word was Dada. I still love him, but I miss our daughter too. I need some comfort too. Neither of us have any siblings and our close friends are in different countries. Liam is no contact with his mother while his father had died shortly after the birth of our daughter. My parents tried to comfort me as much as they could. They told me to be patient with him, to help him get back on his feet. But I'm tired. I tried everything. Earlier, we used to share household chores, but now I've completely taken them on myself so that he can grieve in peace. I cook his favorite meals, which he throws away without even taking a single bite. The last straw was a couple months ago when I told him that if he doesn't go into therapy, I'd file for divorce. He coldly smiled at me and thanked me for showing him my true colors. He told me to go ahead with the divorce since I seemed so eager to ditch him. I feel guilty, horrible, and completely useless, but I just can't go on like this any longer. Should I give him more time? Would things get better? Would I be in the wrong if I leave him now when I'm supposed to be comforting him? This Reddit title reads, I made a fake account to end my relationship and I feel bad about it. I fell in love with my ex hard. Over time, the relationship went from sweet to happy to toxic real fast. Mm. From the beginning, I noticed a few things about him that I seriously disliked. His friends were a bunch of toxic guys who smoked and used horrible language. I hated that his friends... Horrible language. Horrible language. Like what? <laughs> I don't know. But fair enough, fair enough. Very fair. I hated that he had company like that, but I was naive and assumed he was different. I always had an off feeling about him, but I was young and dumb and very much in love, so I put my negative feelings aside. Over time, he became controlling, manipulative, and would gaslight me. He was also extremely clingy and got jealous that I had other guy friends that I would game with and he would get rid of them one by one and I had no say in it. She also says, I'll also admit that I was toxic too at times and a bit controlling. It kind of went both ways. Eventually, I felt like I had no one. I was stuck in a box with him alone and it was destroying me. I was losing myself and becoming so depressed. I would cry a lot and felt like I had no escape. Whenever I tried to break up with him, he would get angry, cry, threaten me by telling me he was going to leak all of my pictures, I assume like intimate pictures, and expose me. Then if I went silent for longer than a day, he would make multiple social media accounts to message me. He would spam me on Instagram, Facebook, Google, my business accounts, my phone number. And he would also use his mum's number to contact me if that didn't work. Get a job. Stay away from her. (laughs) It was hell. It was living hell. Eventually... I came up with a plan. I thought to myself that if I couldn't break up with him, then he would have to break up with me. 
So far, nothing I knew worked. And even if I cheated on him, he would still come back to me. I don't know how I came up with this, but I decided to make a fake profile and follow him on one of his social media accounts. During this, I told him in person that I needed a break and that I would be quiet for a while. He agreed on giving me some space. Anyway, I used the fake profile to get his attention and lure him eventually to get him to chat with me, as in the fake user. Queenie. <laughs> Queenie. <behavior. laughs> this was a big deal because in our relationship, I wasn't allowed to speak to any guy and he wasn't allowed to speak to any girl. And she says in brackets, <sighs> I know, red flag. <laughs> How does that even work? No, it's like, are you just not interacting with any human? Oh, I just, oh. Can't Major go to the supermarket, flag. can't go literally anywhere. I know. Long story short, this fake profile became very sexually, she spelt it with two Gs, sexually involved with him and he enjoyed the secrecy of what was happening. Eventually, I managed to find out about him and the other user chatting behind my back. And she's talking about herself. She found out in person, like, quote unquote. She told him, oh, I found out that you were doing this behind oh my, God. my back. <laughs> he was sick to the stomach, full of anger, etc., cetera, et cetera. I used this and told him that I was done and wanted nothing to do with him and begged me to stay. I told him I didn't care and what he did was unforgivable and that I'm leaving forever. Looking back now, I definitely regret a lot of things I said and did, especially luring him in with a fake user. I guess back then I was so desperate for a way out that I was willing to do anything, but at least that's over. I feel like that's super risky. It is risky and she pretty much is saying she feels really guilty and that's kind of like what's eating her up right now. Oh God, don't feel guilty. I'm kind of like, like no. do what you have to do. Yeah, do what you have to do. But like, I feel like it's risky in terms of this sounds like it was a somewhat abusive relationship. Yeah. Or not even somewhat. It sounds like it was Absolutely, an abusive yeah. relationship. And I feel like doing something like that is going to trigger something or potentially trigger something even worse than what was already happening. As in if he found out that she was actually like duping him behind the scenes and it was her, he yeah. could have potentially done something like absolutely monstrous, which I'm glad hasn't happened and I'm glad that she's out of this relationship. Yeah. But kind of like, I like the creativity. Am I the asshole for refusing to let my bridesmaid wear her dead mother's favorite color to my wedding? I, 31 female, was married to my amazing husband, 34 male, on Friday. The wedding went smoothly, apart from one guest dress preference, who we'll call Anna. Anna's mother sadly passed away in January this year. Her mother was the light of her life, and ever since she passed, Anna has been understandably uptight and distant. I have helped Anna throughout her entire grieving time. We had been planning this wedding since December and decided we wanted an ocean themed wedding. My family and I grew up on the seaside and have always been close to the ocean. I made it extremely clear to all of my bridesmaids that they were to wear blue, a coral pinky color, or pastel green. Everyone agreed and seemed to love my choices. Anna's mother always loved the color dark, vibrant purple. Ever since then, Anna would buy everything purple if there was a purple choice. Anna and me went for lunch a few weeks after the passing to catch up and support her. At the lunch, Anna asked me if she could please wear a purple dress to my wedding. I'm not crazy about themes usually, but since this wedding was themed to support my family's tradition and considering my maid of honor was already going to be wearing a gorgeous pastel blue dress with purple and gold accents, me and my husband, who I decided to call and discuss the idea with him politely, told her that we understand what she's going through, but we really want bridesmaids on theme. To this, she looked hurt and left lunch earlier than expected. I hardly heard from Anna until around four weeks after our lunch, despite my attempts at texting, phoning, and even knocking on her door, but she'd continued to shut me off. That was until she texted me, quote, what do you think of these dresses? And displayed many different purple dresses in photos. I kindly reminded Anna that she wouldn't be wearing a purple dress to my wedding. Anna was enraged. I tried to tell her that I understand her feelings, but my wedding is my own special day. To this, she blocked me. Anna unblocked me two days later, apologizing for the way she acted. Well, when the wedding rolled around, Anna showed up in a purple dress. I asked her why she had gone against my wishes and that she either had to change or leave. To this, she told me to stop creating a scene and that I was being dramatic and disrespectful. Anna broke out in a screaming match and called me and my family insensitive, selfish assholes. She was escorted out the door screaming. Once the wedding had ended, I received messages from Anna's family, friends, and even Anna. They were all saying how Anna was going through a lot and that I was being an asshole. So, am I the asshole for not just 
just letting Anna wear the damned purple dress? I have so many thoughts on this it's, one. Is Anna showing up to be the bridesmaid? Yeah, she's a bridesmaid. Okay. okay, so in this situation, I would just mull over and I'd be like, wear your fucking purple yeah. dress. But oh, your mother has nothing to do with this wedding. And I understand people grieve in different yeah. ways, but like, you're, this is not your wedding. This is not your sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. This is not anyone in your family's wedding. I'm so sorry you're grieving so badly, but if I told my friend nicely like 40 times not to wear a purple dress and then she showed up in a purple dress, it's more of like the principle of like, dude, you just went against everything I said. Got the wedding dress my best friend wanted, but didn't get, and she's mad at me. I, 25 female, got engaged to my now fiance, 26 male, of seven years on December 24th, 2022. Mm. I'm so happy and excited. The wedding is set for March 16th, 2024, and I've already planned so much. Now the drama. My best friend, who I'll call Kay, 25 female, got married August 15th, 2022, and chose me as her maid of honor. We've been best friends for 10 plus years. I was super excited and did everything a maid of honor is expected to do, especially go dress shopping with the bride. We went to at least three different bridal stores together, and she absolutely, all caps, fell in love with one from the last store. She wanted it so bad, and she looked absolutely stunning. However, her mom, who I'll call B, didn't like it. It was a little over budget, and she said it wasn't bridal enough and looked like a cocktail dress. Kay was clearly upset, so I tried to help her come up with ways for her to get the dress. Unfortunately, B didn't budge. Kay ended up choosing a different dress at a different bridal shop that was just as beautiful. Fast forward to February of this year. I ask her to be my maid of honor and invite her dress shopping with my mom and I. I try on several dresses at the first stores, but none of them were the one. So we go to the store where she fell in love with the dress, but didn't get it. And I try on several dresses. I knew I wanted to try on that dress just because. I didn't think it would be a big deal because she ended up choosing another dress the moment i put it on i knew it was the one oh, God. i felt so beautiful and confident for the first time in years Kay went to the restroom and my mom said i should talk to Kay to make sure she was all right so before we all went to dinner i asked Kay, will you be mad if i choose this dress she said i'd be a little jealous but if that's your dress you should get it two weeks later i said yes and set an appointment for her to get her maid of honor dress i even offered to buy it for her because i wanted her to get a dress she wanted no matter the cost after i said yes she got extremely upset and ran into her dress room crying my smile immediately went away and everyone in the bridal shop could see she texted me a few hours later saying quote i'm sorry you knew how much i wanted it for my wedding and it feels like a punch in the gut she also said quote it felt like a stab in the back i couldn't stop crying the next day we had a girl's day because she didn't have a bachelorette that's a whole nother story and we both apologized we had a great day and i thought everything was fine Kay went silent for two months after that day i texted her and basically asked her what's going on she said quote based on how i was treated during my wedding planning and then you getting that dress you don't value you our friendship. I was shocked. I honestly didn't know what she meant by, quote, how I was treated throughout my wedding process, and I didn't respond right away. The next day, I texted her that what she said broke my heart, and we needed to have a conversation, but I needed time to process everything. A week later, I asked Kay if she was still going to be my maid of honor. I told her, quote, I still want you to be, but if you don't want to, I'll understand. And she responds, that sounds like you don't want me to be. I said that was not the case, but I wouldn't force her, and I would respect her decision regardless. She basically ended up saying, quote, I'm still going back and forth with it, but I'm leaning towards not being in your bridal party. Fast forward to weeks of trying to get together in person. We get together and talk. The conversation went well, I thought. I told her she's no longer in the bridal party and my second maid of honor is taking over the role completely. Kay and I both said we want to stay in each other's lives. One thing that Kay said that really pissed me off is that when I said I can't go back in time and choose a different dress, she laughed and said, quote, you could. It would just be a lot of money. LOL. I've been really going back and forth on this and it's adding so much stress to myself so am i the asshole who this that needs to be unpacked a little bit that's dicey you already know let's get into it am i the asshole for my petty response to my boyfriend's purposeful incompetence about the chores mm. my boyfriend has started pretending to be bad at basic life shit like dishes and laundry like he can't do it so i do it I felt pretty frustrated with that and told him straight up that I knew he didn't forget how to clean since he moved in with me and he was always very competent living alone and I didn't appreciate him forgetting how to do chores. I said that when I asked him to do dishes and he refused and refused until he finally did them wrong that I was not stupid. <laughs> 
He said that he was trying his best and that I was wrong for saying that he was trying to manipulate me. And that from his perspective, I asked him to do something and he did it the best he could. And I kept at him because it wasn't up to my impossibly high standards and that he couldn't win. And he wanted me to believe him. And he says that he's trying. Anyway, this might be petty, but I I decided to give believing him a try. So... He had bleach stained my favorite little black dress, and instead of getting mad, next time he had a family event, I put it on. He asked me if I was really going to wear that, and it looked messy. I said that I loved the dress, and I understand that accidents happen, so I wasn't mad or upset that it had bleach spots on it. Actually, I thought it looked kind of cool. He said he really thought it looked bad, and said that if he wants, he could sharpie it over the white spots really quick in the Uber, and it ended up looking even worse. Another time we were having dinner and he had done the dishes and he had put some cups and bowls in the dishwasher upside down so that they could fill with dirty dishwater. I took the cups and bowls and dumped them out in the sink but didn't wash them further and served his food in them. He said that it was dirty and that I was like, they just came out the dishwasher. It's just water. It's fine. (laughs) He said, no, it was disgusting and (laughs) said that it was really no biggie. Or I said that it was really no biggie and I was getting over my impossibly high cleanliness standards and that I really didn't think it was that gross. (laughs) The last time I had cooked for a work party of his and after cooking, the dish needed to be cooled for about 30 minutes and then be refrigerated. I had plans with my friends that night and asked him to put away the dish after it cooled and he forgot. The next morning he noticed the dish was never refrigerated and I said it was fine. It was a mistake and it could probably be fine to eat. There wasn't a lot of meat in it. He got frustrated and said that you can't serve meat left out overnight even if it's only a little. And I said, oh, I think it should be okay. Stuff happens. (laughs) He stopped being so lazy about chores after he realized I seemed totally okay with leaving stuff done badly and that he'll be living with it but I feel a little petty for having being so dishonest about it. I actually hate how bleach, my bleach dress looked and my stomach turns at the dirty soap, dish soap and unrefrigerated meat. Am I the asshole for being petty? Hell no. I tried to leave my husband, but now him and my family are threatening to take my kids away from me if I don't stay married to him. I can't even afford a good lawyer to stand against him in court. Is going back to him pretty much my only option? I met my husband right out of high school. My family didn't have any money, so it was all about making ends meet. He came into my life, helped me, and was always generous with my family. We got married and had our baby, had our first baby when I was 19. Now we have three. Mind you, she's 23, he's 32. Okay, I just got shocked because I just realized what the age difference was. And okay. He's good to the kids, but over the years, he's been treating me worse and worse. I feel like he only wants me to carry his babies, care for them, and do whatever else he says. Every time I've tried to put my foot down about anything, I got yelled at and punished for. Is that your daddy? Okay. My family kept telling me that's what marriage is like, and I need to be a better wife. A few weeks ago, I got tired of it and I left. I couldn't afford a good lawyer and the one I got dropped me. I've been living at a friend's and I'm pretty much out of money. I've had to take my kids back to their dads because he was going to tell the cops that I kidnapped them. Plus, I was struggling to take care of them. I found a fast food job, but it's not going to be good enough to get a place and a lawyer. So I didn't even know what my plan is at this point. My family and my ex are now saying that if I don't go back to him, they're going to make sure he gets full custody and I'll never see them again. I know if we go to court, I'll probably lose because I have no money. I can't even say that he's abusive because I have no proof. I feel like I should do what's best for my kids and go back, but I'm scared. I don't want to go back and get pregnant again, which is part of the reason why I left. I guess I'm posting here to ask what my options are at this point and what can I do? edit holy cow that's a long post i'm sorry adding a too long didn't read i feel so horribly for her i don't i haven't i've never been in a situation like this i've never even like had or heard of anyone being in a situation like this personally so i don't even know because it's like you got to do what's best for your kids and for you and it's like for you, it's not best to go back to that house because if he's being abusive to you, no. But then it's like, I hope he's not also being abusive to your kids. 
even if he's not, is like he's using your kids and hanging them over your head. Like this is gonna be such a long process for her. Oh my goodness. What do y'all think in the comments? What could she do? What's y'all's advice? Like, fuck him. Am I the asshole for canceling dinner and going home over something my boyfriend's dog did? I'll preface this by saying that I, 25 female, have been seeing Michael, 31 male, for a while now. He's a really funny, a bit too sarcastic though, guy, and we pretty much get along well. We've been dating for four months. Michael likes the food I cook, and he wanted me to come to his house and cook him dinner, and also meet his dog for the first time. I only saw him in pictures slash videos. He's overprotective of him. I grabbed all I needed from the store and went over to his house. All went well. I met his dog, then we sat down to talk. Suddenly, his dog started moving in a funny way. Michael was laughing while looking at me. I felt confused. I asked him what the dog was doing, and Michael said that the dog was telling him about me. I was like, um, okay? And then he flat out said that the dog thought I was ugly. This shocked me completely. I looked at Michael and asked if he was serious. He started explaining that this dog is like that with some people, and that I shouldn't get offended over an animal's behavior. I felt horrible because I, as a person who has always struggled with self-esteem and am no stranger to the word ugly, my issue wasn't the dog, but with what Michael said. It's like he was indirectly giving his opinion about my looks and using his dog as an excuse. Long story short, we had an argument and I ended up canceling dinner and going home. Michael called several times. Then when I picked up, he was lashing out the entire time saying that I overreacted and that I cannot blame him and punish him for something his dog did. He advised me to get rid of the quote, toxic sensitivity I have and deal with whatever insecurity I have as soon as possible because what happened will set the tone for our relationship and eventually our marriage later. I did respond later, which caused another argument. My sister said I messed things up with my stupidity and that I should have laughed it off, but for some reason, I wasn't able to. Did I overreact here? No. Fucking run, dude. The way that he was gaslighting the shit out of her, like, yeah, what the fuck is toxic sensitivity? That's a new one. <laughs> deal with that insecurity, bitch. I know I called you ugly to your face, but like, deal with it. Deal with it, or else it's gonna affect our relationship. Bro, get the fuck out of here, dude. And she's over there making dinner. You know what's <laughs> funny is dogs have no thoughts. Dogs don't think that person is ugly. Like, dogs don't do that. Yeah. Dogs hump everyone. Dogs, yeah. think, dogs think, like, ball, food, safety. Like, that's what dogs think about. Dogs don't, aren't like, that person is the ugliest bitch I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's different <laughs> if he was, like, joking, because I've said that to my sister, like, oh, my cats don't like you because they think you're ugly. Yeah. But it seems like he was being serious. <laughs> that would fucking piss me off. Yeah. People who are dating and sure. and like newly dating, relationship yeah. with each other like yeah. i swear to god if billy ever jokingly called me ugly done you know what i mean when we were first dating yeah first four, four months, months yeah. four months that's in. Rough, fuck right there, that too. dude he's like oh ha ha sounds like you want to fuck your dog like why are you so like oh he does that sometimes ugly bitches am i right it sounds like he was trying to neg you and it didn't work then he gaslights you yeah. after that he's like then it's well, your fault yeah. yeah you're so insecure like why are you so insecure because my dog thinks you're a fucking ugly bitch <laughs> Like, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. And he's still doubling down. Yeah. In the, like, the second phone call with her, he's like, why are you blaming me for something my dog did? I can't control my he goes, dog. here he is. You take it up with him. It's on FaceTime and it's just yeah. the dog. And he goes, see? <laughs> he's still doing and it. And the dog's licking, <laughs> he's <laughs> licking his peepee and he's like, see? He still thinks you're ugly. That's on him. Why are you mad at me? Three time when I got essayed by my mother's ex-boyfriend. I was seven, but it ended up happening when I was eight years old and it happened three times. When I was seven years old, my mom was giving me and the boyfriend's daughter a bath together. She was probably about five years old, but my mom had to go to the store to get some medicine because we were both sick. I was seven years old again and the boyfriend's daughter was five years old. So we weren't done in the bath yet and my mom called her boyfriend over to finish giving us a bath. I remember not needing any help. But his daughter and me were friends, so we were just playing in the water watching a YouTube video. My mom's boyfriend ended up getting his daughter out and told her to get dressed. He then came back, locked the door, and when she left, he told me that he was just gonna dry me off. But I told him that I didn't need help, all I needed was my towel. He proceeded to drop the towel and told me he was just gonna clean me off. My mom's ex-boyfriend then proceeded to place his hands on my private area, including my chest. I can't describe on TikTok what he inserted, but this was the first time I got violated. After he was done, he told me to get dressed, 
and this was the first time he violated me, but it happened two more times after this. Every other night, I started to wet my bed, and one afternoon, I told my mom if she could please help me clean up my bed. My mom didn't want to, so she told her boyfriend to help me. I said it was okay, that I could do it myself, but he said that it was late and he was just gonna help me later on that night. I was honestly afraid of my mom's boyfriend because not only did he violate me three times already, but he would also beat on his kids very bad. A lot of people used to live in my house and I used to sleep with my two full-blooded siblings and I would sleep on the far end couch where that long piece of furniture was. My stepdad then proceeds to come and he covers my mouth. He whispers in my ear that he's just going to clean me off. And if I said something, he would see if my siblings liked it too. I stayed quiet and laid there and he never actually inserted himself in me, which I am grateful for. And I never actually found out if he was also doing this to his own children. And I did not end up sharing this with my mother. Last time he ever did this to me was when I was eight years old. I was eight years old when all the intense stuff started happening. I'm always grateful because my mom's boyfriend never actually inserted his penis inside me. My house was super small and crowded and we only had one restroom. Every time my mom went to the casino and my brothers would leave with their dad and my sister would be asleep, I would use the restroom and that's where my mom's boyfriend trapped me. This was a daily routine where my siblings prefer to be with my dad. My sister would be asleep and that's where I would be laying down in the couch alone. So when I was eight years old, it started getting intense because this is when my mom's boyfriend started pulling out his private part and made me squeeze on it. This was when he would trap me in the restroom. Since we only had one restroom, and guess where it was, in my mother's room. And my mother would spend all of her time at the casino. I would have to go inside and that's where her boyfriend was, in their room. I had to use the restroom so many times in the back of my house because I didn't want to come across him. Alright, so one afternoon, I think this was around winter because it was getting very dark. My mother wasn't home and the same thing happened. I went into the restroom and that's where my mom's boyfriend would go in. He did the usual thing, closed the door behind me, pulled down his pants and made me squeeze his private part. I squeezed it so hard and said I was done and I jumped up. He told me that everyone would think I'm a liar and it would be easier for everyone if I stayed quiet, that my mom wouldn't even care and that she already probably knew. After that, he just continued to force my hand to his pants and I told him that I couldn't do this anymore. He completely tried to force himself on me that night and I think he got the message that I was going to tell my mother pretty soon. This time I acted more with violence and it was so close to the point where he was about to completely R-A-P-E. I scratched his eyes and he finally let me go and I ran to my nearest neighbor. They opened the door and I cried to them if I could please stay at their house until my mother got home. My mother's boyfriend chased after me and told the neighbors that it was okay for me to stay with him. Thankfully, my neighbors acted quick and they said that they would feel more comfortable if my mother would pick me up. I told my mom two months later and now I am 14 years old.